The COs call my name, they walk me out the dorm and into a room where I sit down with my lawyer. My lawyer asked me a couple questions. He mentions two Cody's. I had two Cody's, but I told him don't mention them again. The kid was seeing ghosts. He got the hint. This was the same lawyer that defended my dad on his first case. So he understood there was no cooperation in my family. He then asked me if there was anything in the house that I should be worried about. I thought about it for a second and I remembered. As soon as I told him, he ended the visitation and ran out of there. I was stressed, but I still had to go back to the lion's den and keep a poker's face. But now I don't know if the feds are gonna pick it up. I don't know how serious this is gonna get and I'm stressed the fuck out. They walk me back into the dorm, everybody's on lockdown. I go into the cell, I remember the man did not stop snoring, I could not sleep, I was stressed anyways. The next morning we wake up, they call a couple names, including mine. They ship us to Joseph B. Conteen. They put you on a bus, they take you to another place, you go through a couple doors, couple questions, couple doctors, they weigh you, then they put you into your dorm. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I was handcuffed to another inmate and we were walking in a single file line. As Soon as we get inside the dorm, it's loud, it's rowdy, there's some big motherfuckers in there and I'm not racist but I'm looking for some Chicos. I don't see not one. So now I'm really nervous, but I gotta keep my hand next to my hip because it was shaking a little bit. I'm not pussy. I'm just telling you the truth. I've never been in county jail where I had to stay. It was always one-nighters, in and out. Now I knew I had to sit and I had to stay. And mind you, I already had a confrontation with another man over the phone. He was already grouped up, they're friends. I don't know nobody in here. I'm just keeping it honest. They tell me what room number I'm at. I go upstairs, I drop my stuff in the bed. Immediately I know I'm gonna have a problem because nobody in the room's talking to me. It was a six man cell and the man under my bunk cause I had top bunk. The man under the bunk had all his stuff cause under his bed was a big shelf where you could keep all your belongings. And I saw that it was split 50-50 but he had all his stuff spread out. So I let him know, hey, I'm staying, I'm gonna need to put my stuff down. He ignored me. I remember walking out of the cell, down the stairs, straight to the phone, and I call my dad and I instantly tell him, listen, I need to know if I'm getting out now. If I'm not, I'm gonna hang the phone up and you might not hear from me for a little bit because I told myself if this motherfucker did not move his stuff, we were gonna rumble. I had to, you gotta understand. I was absolutely nervous. I didn't know if all the dudes in the cell were friends. I didn't know none of the politics, but I knew from hearing stories of all my family members that when you walk in, you don't act tough, you just respect everybody. But if somebody disrespects you, it's on site. There's nothing to talk about. I asked the man, can you move your stuff? I'm gonna be staying here. He ignored me. So I already knew by the time I hung that phone up, I was walking, but I look, I tried to get a way out. I said, if I'm, I said, listen, is there any possibility that I'm getting out now? He's like, no, you're gonna sit at least 30 days. So when I hung up that phone, I already decided in my head that I already knew there was five men in that cell. I didn't know if they were friends, but I knew when I walked in that cell, if there wasn't any room for my shit. I was going to die about it. I was not gonna be a bitch. I knew I had to stay there for at least a month and it just wasn't gonna happen. I couldn't look myself in the mirror. I have a son. He needs to look up to a man. I walk up the stairs, I open the door, he's moving the stuff. He's not in the best mood about it. Me and him actually get into a little rumble later on that week over, over some cleaning. Every week, every day in the morning, 5, 6 a.m., they come around with a mop bucket. One person in the cell has to clean the floor, the sink, the toilet, a serious rub down. One of those days is my first time cleaning. He tells me I missed a spot. I'll get into that story another time. Remember, I'm stressed the fuck out about this case. So he's moving the stuff, but I'm trying to do my bed. I didn't know how to do the sheets. They definitely knew it was my first time in there. The next morning I wake up, I go downstairs, I jump on the phone. I wanted to know what was going on. Remember I had the meeting with the lawyer, so I was stressed. And I had parts here, parts there. I had to get money. I didn't know how big the case was gonna get. I need to have plays in motion, but I had to talk in code. It was frustrating, it was stressful. But my people are trying to tell me that something got taken care of, I just didn't know what. I don't know this at the time, but my people are staking the house. They're trying to see how to get in. I knew a couple people in that neighborhood and there was balconies, there was a townhouse, three story townhouses, but there were balconies that shared each other. But I didn't know the person that well, the neighbor, I didn't want to get him involved in the case. There's cops around the whole neighborhood and they're trying to get a search warrant. But my people noticed that they, the cops leave around four or five in the morning and then a new set of cops come in. So there's a small window. During this window, this is why she's a soldier. Amanda goes inside the house with my dad's piece of shit ex-girlfriend. That's why I gotta say thank you too. They're soldiers. They went inside the house and they had to clean up a little bit. Cause they didn't want me to get fined with the, with the leasing agents and all that shit. So they cleaned the house up a little bit and they left. Because of that cleaning, they basically, I was able to get ROR a couple months down the road. If not, I would have had to sit and fight that case. Cases go two, three years. I'm gonna show you why I did illegal things. <laughs> <laughs> right, I told you guys it was a three story townhouse. This is it right here. The garage to the right was the neighbor, the one to the left was mine. That balcony, they shared. You could jump over that little balcony and if that sliding glass door could get open, we can both get inside of our places. I didn't want to get them involved in the case, so we didn't go ahead and do that. This little hood rat. 
There was a cop. There was cops here on this street. And over there. And there was cops over there. So here you can see there's a walkway. So you could park, there you could park right over here and you could walk right. Luckily we came during shift change and they weren't here anymore because they were still trying to get the warrant. We went in the, we walked through here. We got in the house the day before they got the warrant. And luckily we did because when I came back, like to pack up our house because we had to turn in the lease. Um, they had fingerprinted and searched the whole entire house. Our stuff was thrown everywhere. Like every, nothing was in a drawer. So going in the house, I wasn't that nervous because I saw that there was no cops there. But obviously when we were leaving and we were going out, my heart was racing because I don't know if the cops were like just pretending like they weren't there or they had undercovers. And then we would leave, we would leave and then they pulled me over. Nobody really talks in my room. Everybody's stressed out, but everybody's acting serious. Everybody has a persona they kind of have to keep up. I knew how to play spades. So I saw two guys playing spades in my room. So I jumped down, I started playing with them. Once they knew how nasty I was in spades, that was it. So I started getting to know people just through spades. By day two, three, the environment wasn't too bad. The food was trash. With spades, I was communicating, so I was relaxed. I was stressed out about the case. I wanted the gun dropped and I wanted to get bond. And my bunkie, me and him weren't really, and I still had an issue with the guy with the phone. And my bunkie was really starting to bother me at this point. Fast forward a couple days, it was hot dog day. Over there, a fucking hot dog and a dollar. I didn't realize how much a hot dog and a dollar was worth until being locked up. We're sitting down, we have lunch. There's a young kid, about 6'6", six, six, black, kind of beefy, but skinny. Then there was a set of older dudes. You could tell they were probably down from the state. They were older, they stuck together. I'm talking like 40, 50. But every morning they had the routine, swole. They were, look, they were like a little crew. One of the dudes is asking other people if they want their hot dog. The young kid, the 6'6 six, six kid, he was keeping his hot dog, he was saving it. So he was eating everything around his plate and he had his hot dog to the side. I guess Pops didn't realize that he was saving it so he asked him again. The young kid snaps on him, he tells him, listen, I'm not gonna tell you again. The old man stands up, the young kid stands up. The Pops tells him, listen bro, it wasn't that serious. The kid puts his guard down, the old man cracks him. That shit fucking rocked the table. I remember it happened so fast, he hits the kid, the kid spins a 360, Pops grabs him, slams him, and I remember blood Splurting on my plate, like on the, I remember blood splurting on the table where I was eating, so I was like, fuck, I couldn't eat the food. And I just see this dude beating the fuck out of him. At this point, this kid's unconscious. This kid's laying out on his back, and this man is beating the fucking brakes off of his face. And the older dudes are kind of just standing by, making sure nobody breaks it up. And I remember telling myself, like, somebody break it up, this kid's gonna die. The seals are taking forever. Then the seals get there, they're pepper spraying, but they're hitting the old man in the back of the head. Meanwhile, just, mm. Back to back, and I'm just like, I never had so much fear in my heart for another man. Eventually, they got the dude off, and I remember the old man was screaming. Ah! <laughs> everybody went back up to the cells. Nobody was talking. I swear to God, that night, everybody's working out. You, <laughs> the next morning, we come out, everybody's doing push-ups, sit-ups. It, it put everybody in line. I already knew at that moment, a fight in jail is a whole nother ball game. And I know there's a bunch of people that have been to jail and they've seen a bunch of fights in myself after that that were light work, but that was the first one. And after I seen him and I seen the old man trying to kill him, in my mind, that's how every fight had to go. 